There are three impoverished islands off the west coast of Ireland's county Galway that played an unusual, unexpected, and highly essential role in the trajectory of Irish independence. Imagine an island that less than a decade before the Model T came out in America was home to exactly zero wheeled vehicles. No carts, no wagons, just some spinning wheels for making yarn. These islands are one of the last places in Ireland where Irish Gaelic was still spoken. Their thin soil hadn't even existed just a few generations previously. Settlers had arrived in this rocky, barren land and found no dirt. So they had to drag seaweed up and let it rot in, able to be, in order to be able to grow anything. Indeed, 20th century modernity had not reached the rocky shores of these Aran Islands. In an Ireland that some might argue was almost entirely anglicized by the early 20th century, all that remained of a pre-colonized Ireland were the three Aran Islands where fairies were still revered, Irish was the language of choice, and mainland boots were eschewed in favor of moccasin-like pampooties. In fact, at the turn of the 20th century, the way of life on the Aran Islands looked fairly similar to what it would have a thousand years before. This extreme isolation and poverty would ironically cause these small islands to become a paradigm of romantic nationalism for increasingly discontented Irish intellectuals. The west of Ireland, especially the Aran Islands, was seen as the last remaining oasis of a true Ireland. And so nationalist writers, Celtists, linguists, and folklorists flocked to the islands to experience the romance of the un-Anglicized countryside. Many books, poems, and plays were written about Aran as part of the Irish literary revival, usually with the goal of convincing Irishmen of the value of anti-British nationalism. All this literary revivalism was hand in hand with the rising political intentions involved in the Home Rule movement and the Gaelic League's campaign to reintroduce Irish as a primary language of Ireland. This quest to record and exalt the Celtic tradition brought William Butler Yeats, Lady Gregory, John Millington Singh, and countless other intellectuals to Aaron. Playwright John Millington Singh would be the intellectual to spend the most time on Aaron. His goal was to live with and like the islanders in order to borrow from the Celtic tradition and help Ireland recapture an independent cultural identity distinct from the one imposed by colonization. He returned to the islands every year between 1898 and 1902, spending most of his time in this cottage right here. This cottage, which is today preserved as a museum, was the home of the McDonough family, including my great-great-grandfather. This is a picture of my great-great-grandfather that ended up on the cover of the Penguin edition of Singh's memoir of his time there, the Aran Islands. Their friendship is, a fascinating, is fascinating, complex, and well-documented by historians, and is something that I would hope to go into in my TEDx talk. The obsession with Aran as part of the larger push for Irish independence, both political and cultural, was a fascinating moment in time. Literature inspired by Aran helped create a new wave of books, poems, and plays by and for the Irish people. And the revival of the Irish Gaelic language, which was taught to movement leaders by the people of the Aran Islands, was an essential step in Ireland regaining its independence. I very much hope to get the chance to give a TEDx talk on this subject.